know that this is being is being recorded. Thank you, Robert Lady, for for saying that. So welcome to our, our training. So this um for those of you who haven't joined before, we have been having a series of training. And this time, the first series we had, they were on um, developing biblical knowledge, which was led by Brother Everett. Then we had how to plan and prepare a lesson, led by Sister Leela. And then now we're having Sister Maureen, who is going to be um, leading us on how to plan and prepare a lesson. So before we go, um, we're going to ask, is it Sister? Sorry. Kate, I can't remember who is um, leading us in our word of prayer. So we have, we'll have an opening prayer and then we'll have a song. Yeah. Um, sorry, Sister Kate, did you not get the updated slides I sent you um, for today? This is not the, the, the correct slides. I oh. sent you an updated one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I think it was Sister, is it Sister Eka that's going to open us, open a word of prayer? All right. Does it seem as if Sister Eka? Yeah. Right. I think it's supposed to be Sister Comfort. Please hold that down a little bit, it's too loud, please. Then Sister, I, it's too loud. Sorry, can I just mute? Um, <coughs> sorry. Sister Comfort, can you open us up with a word of prayer, please? Thank you. Okay, ladies, good good evening. Uh, let's go to our God in prayer. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, Father of our dear Lord Jesus, we thank you so much, Father, for giving us this opportunity to meet again, to study your word, to to educate ourselves and uh, be better Christians and to study to show ourselves approved unto you, a workman that need not be ashamed. So Father, thank you for this opportunity that we have, Sister Maureen, who's going to uh, teach us on how to study, teach ourselves and other people and we pray, oh God, that we will be able to understand that you lead her with your spirit, that whatever knowledge you have given to her and wisdom that she would impart into us and that we will be very attentive and be very receptive. And we pray against all distractions, even though we are at each other's home. And um, we pray that things at home would not distract us, our children, our spouse, our phone calls or things like that, that we try to concentrate on what we are doing. Father, thank you so much. And we pray that as we continue to learn that we also improve in our daily lives, in all areas of lives, oh God. We pray, oh God, that you help those that are still trying to come on to join, that they make make it quickly to join us pray for those who because of work they will not be able to join that there will be a chance for them to join us another time father we pray that you be with us for the start until we finish oh god father thank you for hearing our prayers all the time and our soft supplications. We also pray for those who would wish to be here, but they are sick. They are not able. One thing or the other has taken them away. Father, thank you for everything. We pray, pray that you bless us all and that we impart this knowledge which we have learned and put it into practice, oh God, help us. Without you, we cannot do anything. Father, help us, oh God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, um, Sister Comfort. And I think um, Sister Kate, you're going to um, lead us. So. Hard to be. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave my God alone. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Okay, thank you.
thank you very much um, for that, um, um, Sister King. And over to you, um, Mary. Um, are you going to be sharing your screen? So. Yeah, well, you know, here's the funniest thing. So um, I had my PowerPoint presentation opened up and suddenly it is not working. It says that it needs to be repaired. Now I can either switch off and reboot or I can continue. And when I um, and when you all go to a break, uh, the breakout room, I can then reboot and then come back uh, with a, with the slide. So it depends on what people's preference are. I'm happy either way because I can talk you through the first session. It just means you don't get the the wonderful opportunity to see my you know my great slides that I I spend some time on um, you know finding the right images etc. So um, Michella, do you want to make a an executive decision on that? Shall I just plow ahead? Or should I switch off and Let's try flow to ahead, Marine. Flow ahead. Flow ahead. Okay. Right. So questions for um, everyone. Um, to, so today we're dealing with knowing your audience. And one of the things I want to ask you, um, and that, that is in the context of what your audience can retain. Um, and therefore the context of um, your presentation for your audience. How much do you reckon of the last time when I talked about mindset, how much of that presentation do you think you retained? Do you remember everything I talked about or just some of the things I talked about? Um, what, 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 yeah, great to hear your, your thoughts on how much of it do you think you I suppose, Sorry, well, so we, apologies, I don't, I'm, completely ignoring the house um but Maureen I think you remember the things that impacted you so you won't remember everything but there are some key takeaways that for instance I remember um part of the fear of public speaking that you have to have your mindset right that if you think things are going to go wrong they will go wrong kind of thing so but I don't remember everything of your beautiful brilliant lesson last time but yeah Okay, Excellent. So, Anybody else? Uh, Michelle, you, you were going to say something. Can I just say, if um, there are people who want to contribute, um, you can use the raise the hand button, or you can um, put um, your contributions in the chat. So for me, I think the, the it, I don't remember every single thing that was said, but I do remember, um, you know, just um, how much I was taken for granted my people's mindset around public speaking and that if you're taking on the role to speak that you your mindset will just automatically be fine and when you use the word glossophobia which was the first time i heard that word um you know i was like yes the fear of public speaking is is, is real <laughs> and that you definitely do have to have the correct mindset when you're going out there to speak, because if not, you know, nervousness, you know, you, you choke up, you, 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 you get distracted, you lose, yeah. So, so having that mindset, and even if you're fearful, of put, being able to push through that fear. So that was, that was one of the things I remember. And as, as Louisa said, that was the thing that resonates with me, because you remember the things that touch your soul, yeah. yeah. Anyone else? Okay. If not, uh, the studies show that uh, the the next day after listening to a presentation, you forget fifty percent. Um, no, actually, I think one hour after you forget fifty percent of what you heard, and then the following day, by the following day, you've forgotten seventy percent of it. But, you know, as Sister Louisa and um, Sister Michella said, you tend to retain the thing that somehow have more than a, um, a listening kind of impact on you. You can either visualize it or connect with it in some ways. And the reason I bring this up is, is to connect with the, um, the point about mindset and, and being kind to yourself in terms of how you're preparing 
um, and the points you want to get across in a presentation, knowing that human beings can only retain so much of what you are, uh, are saying. And it's, it, it's not, you shouldn't take it the wrong way, it's just human. And therefore that should tell you that when you want to deliver a presentation, you need to be mindful that people can only, people can only really retain the thing that somehow will have an impact on them. Right, excellent. So um, last time we looked at the mindset, um, as we just discussed, and we covered, um, you know, what we covered was how everything starts with your thoughts, right? And before you deliver a presentation, you, you know, the outcome of that presentation can be determined by how you're thinking about yourself and how you're thinking about how the presentation is going to go. And so today, there are three things I want to look at in terms of the next stage of that, which is the audience. And I want to talk about what might your audience be. Sorry, not what your audience might be, but who your audience might be. Um, what do you want from your audience? Or in other words, what is the purpose of your presentation? And then finally, how to connect with your um, audience. So that's the three things we'll be looking at um, today. And what I will also be using, I'll be using Paul and Acts. So dig out your Bible. I, I had the passages all on, on the slides to, you know, to reduce the need for you to use your Bibles. But anyway, grab your Bibles because we're going to go into Acts. We'll also talk um, about Luke as well. We'll also look at Luke. But I will be using Paul you know, to illustrate um, the, those three points that I talked about. So what, who your, your audience might be, um, what it is you want from your audience and how to connect with your audience. So those three things I will use Paul to help us illustrate. So um, if someone can read Luke 4, 28 to 30, and whilst we're, whilst we're reading this, I want you to imagine that your audience could be people like that so someone read look for 20 30 another person if you can open up to act 7 57 to 58 um and then i want someone who um has good stamina in reading to read acts um 22 so look so we uh, look for 28 to 30 and all the people in the synagogue were filled with rage as they heard these things. Yeah. And, they, and they got up and drove him out of the city and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been built in order to throw him down the cliff. By passing through their midst, he went his way. Thank you. Um, and uh, Acts 7, 57 to 58. Is that 58, 51? Um, Acts 7, 57 to 58. But when they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse, when they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him, and the witnesses laid aside their robes as the feet at the feet of a young man named Saul. Uh, which, of course, was um, Paul. Paul. Um, and before we go to Acts chapter 17, sorry, I don't have my slides, so it's a little bit difficult. But before we go to Acts 17, which, as I said, I need someone with some stamina to read the whole um, Acts 17. What, what, what do you take away from those two passages? So look for 20, 30, Acts 7, 57, 58, in terms of um, your audience. They were not receptive. Yeah, and one would say even violent, right? Yeah. Right. And it, it, it is not impossible that you face such audience, especially if you're going out to teach, um, to evangelize, so it's not always the case that your audience will be, you know, your 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 bro, your, your sisters, you know, and in in a non-threatening environment, you have to think that your audience can be um, anyone. So can someone read chapter Acts chapter seventeen? And there, that is where we're going to look at how Paul 
um, is dealing with um, various audiences. And the key focus there will be when he gets to Athens. But if I can have someone with a strong voice and who's able to um, read the whole chapter, that, that would be great. Acts 17, right? Yes. So the whole chapter. Yes. Okay, I... it reads. Well, I have King James Version. Is that all right? That's fine. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was this, where was a synagogue, a synagogue of the Jews, and Paul and his manner was went in, in unto them and three Sabbath days re reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. And some of them believed and, and consulted with Paul and Silas. And of the devout Greeks, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few, but the Jews which believed not moved with envy, took unto them certain lute, sorry, my thing just turned around, took unto them certain lured fellows of the Beza sort and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out of the people, out of, out to the people. And when they had found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, these that have turned the world upside down are come hither also, whom Jason had received. And these all do contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. And they trouble the city, and they trouble the people and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. And when they had taken security of Jason and of, and of the other, they let them go. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Therefore, Many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks and of men, not a few. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came thither also and stirred up the people. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as to where to the sea as to where to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. And they that conducted Paul brought them, brought him unto tents, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Hypocureans and of the Stoics accounted, encountered him and some said, what will this babbler say? Others some, uh, he seemed to be a satyr forth of strange gods because he preached unto, unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Areopagus, saying, 
may we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know therefore what these things mean. For all the athe Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. 22, then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all this, in all things, ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by, as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I, find, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you. God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all this of the face of the earth and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord. If haply they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us, for him we live, for in him we live and move and have our being as certain also of your own poet and have said, for we are also his offspring. For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandment commanded all men everywhere to repent because he had appointed a day in that which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he had ordained, whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had re raised him from the dead. 32. And when they had heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So Paul departed from among them, howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among which was Di Dionysius and Arupagite, and the woman named Damarius, Damaris and others with them. That's the end. You're muted. Amen. Maureen, you're muted. Yeah, sorry, I'm talking away to my screen. But well done, Sister um, Comfort. A lot of stamina there. Um, what what I what I wanted us to see from that passage, you know, from that chapter is um, there's loads of wisdom there for us in terms of the kind of audience we might face when we are presenting the word of God. Either informally, it might be through slides and we're talking at a very um, friendly event where we have fellow sisters. Equally, you might be teaching the word to um, people like Paul was. You, your audience might be made up of people who are religious, people who are agnostic, people who are positively, um, you know, against what you are, um, you, are, you, are, you are teaching and speaking of. You, you can think about the workplace, exactly how do you present the word of God to people at the workplace or people on the street. So when we talk about teaching and giving a presentation, we should not just have the mindset that it is, you know, two people who are very receptive. Some in the audience might be receptive, but it's, it is possible that if we are doing as Christ asked us to do, which is to spread the message, present the word um, out mm -hmm. there, your audience might be made up of some of the people you've just read about. 
um, and it's to be very conscious and mindful of that. You can also, as we saw from that um, chapter, you can have a you can either have a captive audience, people who want to hear um, what you have to say, or you may be imposing yourself on that audience, as for instance, Paul was doing um, in 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 this case. So you know, having a, a, a view of what your, you know, who your audience might be, the diversity um, amongst your audience is, is key. And that's also where mindset comes in because you realize by having the right mindset, Paul was not swayed by who he was speaking to. So he didn't get phased by the fact that there were people who were positively hostile to what he was saying. And that is because he approached it already before he started preaching and give and presenting the word of God. He already was very grounded in his mind about what he wanted to say and impact to his audience. So um, um, I, that, that, is, that is key. Now, the first um, breakout um, session, now you have to forgive me because I don't have my slides um, and I'm not quite sure how we work those um, breakout sessions. So I'm depending on, on Michella to do the magic and make it work. I'm going to paraphrase the question I had on the slide into the chat. And it really is about learning from yourself about your audience. So more often than not, you are in the audience, right? And you know for yourself that sometimes when you look at a preacher, a Bible teacher, or someone you meet on the street and they come to you with um, a presentation of the word of God, whatever form that presentation takes, you behave in certain ways. You know what your mind is towards that person. You know how critical you can be. You know how receptive you can be because you are more likely than not to be part of that audience and so you should learn from yourself so what I would like you to do is to consider that when you're in a bible class or in a sermon what it is you want as um as an audience um think about your best or worst bible classes that you've been part of and try and think about what was going on there for you in your mind what you what you thought was working well or not working well and then I, I want you to go into your breakout um um, session and have a bit of a discussion about um, what you learn from knowing yourself as an audience. Does what you, the way you behave and you, the way you think about a presenter, does that influence an impact on your mindset about yourself as a presenter of the word of God? Um, and you know, what's, what, what sort of lessons do you, 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 can you bring out from knowing yourself as an audience. I hope that's clear. So Michela, should I leave that to you? To... Just, just, just bear with me one moment, Marie. I'm trying to, um, so I'm assigning, so I'm creating four rooms mm -hmm. and I'm asking it, okay. So it has assigned people automatically to these rooms. I don't know whether I should create three or four rooms. I have, a, I have four rooms. Yeah, so I'm opening up the rooms and people say so you'll have like three, sometimes there'll be three or four people, but yeah. How many minutes are we giving people? It's giving them, um, how many, you, you Marie, you tell me how many, how many minutes do you want All right, let's, to let's, have in the room? Let's give, let's give seven minutes. Seven minutes, okay. Yeah, and in the meantime, I'm going to try and switch off my computer and start again to see if I, yeah, I can solve this issue with my okay. PowerPoint. So can we ask, so Abigail, you're in room one. Can you lead the discussion? Um, Leela, is it, you're in room two. Can you lead that discussion? And oh, oh Maureen, it has put you in a room. Should I remove you? Yeah, for now, because I so need to start, try and, and fix this problem. From, can, you, can you lead the discussion in your room, please? So I'm opening up all the rooms and I've, I'm putting in the message in. So you should all accept.
So Sister Rita and Sister Neka, Sister Jennifer, Sister Flora, Sister Shirley, can you join your rooms, please? Which room am I? Yeah, you, there should be a sign that says to join. You just need to click on it and it will take you to the room. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So there should be something on your screen that tells you to join the room. Okay, okay. Sorry, I've so, seen it. Okay. Yeah, so Thank can you, you join? Yeah. Okay. Join. Okay, and the lady that was assigned you, um, Sister Kate, can you join your room, please? Sister Adelaide, can you join your room? Kate, yeah. Maureen, um, did you manage to get this done? No, it's not working. I, 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 I don't want to blame the devil, but I find the whole thing incredibly, incredibly <laughs> odd. Email it. I always yeah, say email I just, You know, I was looking at it just, you know, when I was speaking to you, it was on my screen. I was um, adding, um, you know, an image to it. And I, this has never ever happened before, but I won't blame the devil. I'll just chuck it down to weirdness. Just very, very strange. So, so what is it? So can you at least in the seat? You know, like if you're going to. No, it won't allow me to open it. Even when I try to recover an no, earlier not version. Open, not open. Can you try to see if you email it to me? Just go email it to okay. me and see if, if, if that will will work. Well, let's the, see. The very court rule doesn't allow me to give them time. I think after seven minutes, I will. Um, so when I close this, it gives them a countdown. OK. Um, hang on. Let me try and send this to you. It really, really is. No discernible reason as to why this should have happened. Just email it to me and see if it will work. Yeah, let's see. Documents. Delivering a presentation. Okay. So I've sent it to you. Let's see if that works. You send it to my hotmail, yeah? Yeah. Michi. Let's see. I can't read it. Yeah, I don't know why it's in that. It's just, it's so irritating because I spent so much time on that last night looking for images and and so on. But you know, I won't I, I won't let that distract me because um I guess there must be a good reason why this has happened. It's uh, just these pumps, are we gonna I think I don't know if that's seven minutes yet. Oh, I wasn't counting. Do um, you know what time you put them in? Probably uh, it, you can start 
taking them out, I guess. Um, because they are co-hosts. Are you still co-hosts? Participants. Yes, yeah, so I'm worried I'm making a co-host. So what you can do, mm -hmm. you can actually go into the room and see, listen to what people. So okay, so how do I know? Oh, sorry. I'm reclaiming. Sorry, Maureen. Yeah. Can you um <laughs> click on your participants? And give mm -hmm. me back host, please. Sorry, click on participants. Okay. Sorry, I meant to make you a co-host. Can you click on the participants? Mm -hmm. And then click on my name and send me a host, please. For more. Okay, I'm yeah. on more. More, yeah. Click on more mm -hmm. and Stratford Church Affairs. More and then send me a host. Mitchell, I, I don't think my... Something is wrong with my... Um... Marie, go to participants yeah yeah no i'm on it and i'm trying to it's just not it's when i click on more it's just asking me to rename no 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 you, are, you need to be on participants yeah and, yeah and then when you click on more go to more yeah it doesn't give me any option other than rename because what has happened maureen is that you are now the host oh, so i can't no. take people from out to the breakout room oh but gosh if you, if, I don't know. So if you go to, you click on my name, not your name. I my know, name. I, yeah. And when you go to more and my name, not yours, on the Stratford Church of Christ. Yeah. Okay, wait, it's working more, now. One, one second, it's giving me an up. Wait, hang on, let's see. Uh, okay, so no, yeah, yeah, leave it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm not, good, good. So good. I'm going to close the breakout room now. Some people have 60 minutes. Yeah. Okay. To come back. Um, so, yeah, everybody now, they should be back in 48 seconds, yeah. So people are joining, yeah, joining back. And do you, so are you going to be asking people to present, yeah? Yeah, um, who was the lead, I think so you, Abigail you know me. Abigail. Um, group one, Louisa group two, and Sister Comfort group three. Okay. So, Get your presentation sourced, Maureen. No, but, you know, and I was just saying to Michella, I, you know, one would be tempted to blame the devil for this because I had the presentation open. Um, minutes before we <laughs> logged in, and now I can't open it. I <laughs> sent it to Michella and she can't open it. So oh yeah. wow. Okay. All right then. Yeah. So um, but yeah, one shall plod on as uh, everybody's back now, Marie. Excellent. Well, thank you everyone. I know that we have three people, um, uh, so one person in each of the group who um, was the lead in that group. And what we will do is just call on you to feedback. Now, what I would appreciate, um, because it makes it easier for me, it makes it more interactive, it makes it more interesting, is if others would, you know, chip in and ask questions and interact. Um, otherwise, you, you'll just be hearing a monologue from me. So um, I will call on Abigail to just feedback and just summarize um, what you discuss in terms of the audience and the question that was um, asked of you. Okay, thank you, Sister Maureen. Um, for us, looking at the questions that were asked, we couldn't answer every question, yeah. Yeah, no, that's fine. 
Yeah, so um, for the first one, what puts you off in the presentation? Um, well, all sisters contributed and some said the attitude of not involving the audience um, can put the audience off. And if a, if a presenter behaves as if he knows it all and just talk blah, 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 on and on without getting ideas from the audience, it also puts, it can also put us off. And also if somebody brings an entirely something which is completely different from what you already know, sometimes it can put you off. And the tonation of the person's voice and the body language can also put you off. And um, for us who are learning to be good presenters, our mindset and our attitude towards that person, we try to put ourselves in the person's shoes and try to follow the teacher or the presenter, try to pay attention even when we are not interested in the topic. So we expect to not to um, show off when we are presenting or um, we have to try and involve our audience during our presentations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Sister Louise? Are you talking to me? Yeah, oh, <laughs> I forgot your, the A at the end of your name, Louisa. It's okay. Yeah, so um, funny enough, um, Going off what Sister Abigail said, that was a that was a similar comment from um, our group that when um, there's no audience participation or the presenter is. Louisa, you went on mute. Very much um, laugh, um, but one sister made a really good point that. What she would try and do is, um, you know, as much as she'll be tempted to walk out, she would sit there and listen and then maybe speak to the presenter afterwards and try and just kind of point out some of the, the, the flaws and the faults and how she felt about the, the method of presentation. Um, sister, one of the sisters made a really good point that because they they know different people giving different lessons they kind of adapt what they not what they expect but the kind of the pace of each presentation so some people might um give more of a you're back on mute louisa might give more pace but that I think it was Sister Leslie. She said she prefers um, uh, when people give practical examples. And so that very much um, feeds into her presentation, but it also is dependent on the audience that she is teaching or reaching out to. And um, one of the sisters said that you have to try and spend some time allow for time in your presentation at the beginning to kind of determine where your audience is before you charge in um, into your presentation. So that would help you um, be okay. flexible and determine um, how, what you are going to, how you're going to present. Yeah, so that was kind of the discussion. So one of the, you know, it was, I like that. It was knowledge of the audience, um, the diversity, participation and flexibility. That's what they, they looked at. Um, thanks, Sister Louisa. And finally, Sister Comfort. Um, in my group, um, we discuss about being one of the audience ourselves. What would we like to hear? And our sisters say that they would really like the clarity of the person teaching. Otherwise, the teaching will be very boring or disinteresting. And then one of the sisters also added that they would also expect to see like a body language matching with what the person is saying, you know, not that 
for instance, somebody is saying something very serious, but laughing about it. So it really doesn't match. And also that as a listener, we would, um, as a, uh, if you are then presenting to people, you would like people to actively listen and sometimes nodding of the uh, head, sometimes probably people may be nodding, but they are not really listening or some active listening and saying uh -huh, yes and true and things like that. And you can really engage that your audience is listening to you. And also, uh, we also talked about the audience, um, the, the, the presenter asking open ended question to make sure that the listeners are really uh, taking what they are, what the presenter is saying. And um, also the speech, uh, like I said, clarity should be there in what they are talking also. And um, yeah, sisters, if I've forgotten some, just add there for me. Anyone wants to add from Sister Comfort Group? So is this the message? So we talk about um in apart from the also um we I think we discuss about if we are giving if we are the speakers where yeah. um, we are from and um one of us said um there every when you read the Bible you come across therefore what is therefore uh, yeah there, yeah. Um, uh, Best. So therefore, it for me personally, mercy. I like to when I'm teaching, I like to or presenting, I like to start from the bottom bay and move up so that you can sort of bring your audience with you. Because yes. if you're going to from there for some audience will not know what it's there for, whatever you're going to say. So that's one of the things we discuss as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so that, that, that's about the structure. But I, I want us to just pause for a moment and given all the feedback, which I think is absolutely excellent. And it, it, it demonstrates the diversity of an audience, what an audience wants, what they want to he hear, you know, the, the, the emotion they bring um, to, to being part of the audience. Um, and I want us to acknowledge that it is so diverse that it is impossible for you as a presenter to meet all of those needs, right? Um, and, and I want you to also think about Paul and to consider when he was speaking to his audience, for instance, in Athens, if he had to spend time thinking about, you know, that diversity of needs of his audience, do you think he would be able to even put one word forward um, if he had all of that in his mind? Um, and if he, he allowed himself to go into that space of when I'm in the audience, I want the presenter to be everything um, to all people, right? And that can be very daunting because it is not possible for you as a presenter to meet all these needs, but your audience have those needs, right? And your audience is, is absolutely right to have those needs, but it's incumbent on you as a presenter to realize it is not possible to meet all those needs. And that is where, as we go along, we'll talk about how does the audience and the presenter connect in, a, a, you know, in some kind of equilibrium, but particularly for you as a, a, a presenter, where how do you become comfortable with you know, presenting to a diverse audience that many might not like what you're saying. I think one sister said, you know, uh, there is an urge to walk out. You might look at your audience and some people are sleeping um, yeah. or they are distracted. What would that do to you as a presenter? Because all of that is very possible. And, you know, okay, we're not really in a situation where, we are like poor, where possibly, you know, um, people will look to um, commit violence against us because of what we're saying and preaching the word of God. But it's just to appreciate that when you're presenting, and that's why mindset is so important, and then we'll go on to actually the purpose of your presentation. But that's why your mindset is going to be incredibly 
important because you're, there will be a portion of your audience that's bored with what you're saying. They're, they're not interested. They think you should be doing it a different way. Um, and there's some people who will be receptive. And we saw that with Paul, right? Paul imposed himself on, on the audience. He did not spend time thinking, oh, what if they didn't like me? Or what, what, or maybe they might want it this way, might, might want it that way. What we do see from Paul is that he was grounded in the word. And that is a, a fundamental starting point to be grounded in the word um, and deliver in that presentation, be it to a, a group of receptive sisters, be it to um, maybe work colleagues or people you're evangelizing with one, maybe on the fence, so they're positively hostile, et cetera. It's making sure that you are grounded in the word of God, just like Paul was. He did not allow himself to be overly concerned about the fact that he may not be pleasing all the people that were part of his audience. Um, any, any thoughts on that? Uh, please do interact. It makes it easier for me and it makes it more interesting for you. So I, as I said at the beginning, I don't want to go through a monologue. So really appreciate it. Maureen, Maureen, yeah, Maureen, Sister Sharman has got a hand up. Sister Sharman. I'll meet yourself. Uh, go ahead. Yes. So it actually, I agree with what you said, Sister Maureen, to a point. However, my concern would be um, hi, Sister Comfort, I see you, we'll chat. Uh, it depends on the purpose of your presentation. So for example, if you are um, presenting to a group of women in um, church or you know, a women's class, and you really want them to um, gain or benefit from the message that you're presenting, you would have to be considerate of you know, whether or not you're reaching all of them. You might have the odd one who is um, not receptive, but the majority of your participants should actually be benefiting from your presentation. Oh, that's, that's my thought on it anyway. Yeah, yeah um, and, and we're going to come on to what it is you want your audience to know. In other words, the purpose of your presentation. I, I would to continue to point out that you cannot control your audience, right? And you, your, the message, just like when we go out into the world and we have a very good message to give to people, it's based on the Bible and we speak the truth. It does not mean that even no matter how good that message is, you cannot control your audience, even amongst um, Christians. Because as I said, put ourselves in, in the shoes of the audience. Even when people are to the best of their ability giving a good word, it does not mean that we are, we are not distracted, we are not falling asleep because we might be tired or we, we disagree with what they're saying. So you, you can only, as a presenter, ensure that you're grounded in the word, just like Paul was, and then you're delivering, right? Um, and what we do know is, we do the planting, even amongst a Christian audience, we are doing the planting and God is doing the rest, right? There is only so far as a presenter of the word of God, you can go you, to aim to try or to think that you must convince everyone, um, mm -hmm. I think is, is seeking to put yourself in, in the place of God because God says you do what I'll ask you to do and I will do the rest. Um, but you have to have a purpose. I completely agree with you. In presenting the word of God, you need to have a clear purpose as to what you, you, you're delivering to your audience and knowing who your audience is. But accepting not everyone in your audience will be receptive. Um, Maureen, yeah, yeah. Sister Comfort has her hand up. Sister Comfort, okay. go ahead. Yeah, um, just a little I wanted to add there that um, if you are presenting and you sort of prepared, you have your slide, you have probably uh, your books or uh, papers, don't stick your eyes on the book or the slide or the papers because you lose your audience eye contact. Because when will you detect that your audience are not really uh, getting along with you? 
if you have eye contact all around the room that you are delivering your message, you will be able to find out probably out of 20 people you have, five of them are sleeping. And then you can break, break your uh, presentation and just maybe do some little exercise that we do in probably in uh, like we have um, um, like ladies day or so we just tell the song uh, leader to lead us in a chorus or so and that will wake will, you will get the attention of people that are probably looking somewhere else or sleeping falling asleep or uh, things like that the, the main thing is that you have to have uh, eye contact with your audience so you know what is going on, whether you are being understood or you are being listened to. Thank you. Yeah, and uh, we we are going to come on to connecting with um, your audience. So there, there are three things um, I want you to take away from the presentation today. And that is one, it's about appreciating that um, one, you, you should have the, the right mindset um, going into the presentation because that really is the strong basis upon which you're engaging with the audience. It's appreciating that you cannot control your audience, just as we saw with Paul, he imposed himself on the situation, but he was not faced by the fact that some people will be receptive, some people will not. And we have to appreciate that when we're doing a presentation. And our audience will not always be because the great commission that was given to us is to go and present the word of God, you know, uh, out into the world. Your audience may not always be a friendly bunch. They might be sitting on the fence. They might be agnostic. They might be very receptive. Um, equally, they might be positively violent um, or hostile to, to the word of God. So you have to appreciate that your audience may be the type that Paul encountered. You may even find that your audience and you do not know what's going on for your audience. They might be tired. I've seen people in church very tired and they, they take a nod. It's, you, you mustn't make that you know, throw you off what the word um, on the presentation that you are bringing across. You, you, you need to have grace in you know, dealing with your audience. And as you said, Sister Comfort, in one, you, you know, in, and having grace to your audience, they may not be receptive. Um, having a purpose, as Sister Shaman said, um, for your, your um, uh, message. And finally, being able to engage with them, connect with them. And when things are not going as you might like, having some techniques to either, as you said, Sister Comfort, probably wake them up. And that might mean changing the tone of your voice or maybe, you know, doing something else that might um, grab people's attention. But so these are the three things, knowing your audience, uh, having the purpose um, for your presentation and connecting with your audience. But I know we've kind of um, gone to the other two. So why don't I just canter through them <laughs> anyway? Um, so um, any, any other comments before we move on to the purpose of there's your presentation? No, yeah, Maureen, there's no hands up. So Sorry, go on, um, carry on. Oh, Maureen, I can't raise my hand. It's, it's my challenge. Okay. Um, I had to, I'm not feeling too well, so I had to ask Louisa to step in for me. Um, one of the thing, key things I'm getting here is that you have to have confidence in the message that you are delivering. Because if you don't, you're going to be um, the off-putting by every little thing that's happening in that room. So, you know, what if you're believing in the message that you're delivering, Sometimes, you know, people might not be convinced, but you can win them over as well. And and some of the things in 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 what in um in term as sister comfort is talking about eye contact, and that is about connecting to the audience, which is what you're going on to. But but I think having confidence that the message that we're delivering is the right one, and 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 having the knowledge, and even the, you're not necessarily an expert. But believing in that message, you know, it translates and it translates even if in your mindset as well. So if, if you are not convinced of what you're saying, it's going to be very hard for you to bring the audience along with you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I will reiterate, you know, when as Christians, um, 
be it the presentation of the word of God or otherwise, we, we need to um, believe that uh, and have the right mindset that we are going to do something that is good, right, positive, um, not to get too caught up in ourselves and worrying about what people might think about us, um, but really going with that confidence and, you know, understanding that when you're engaging with your audience, you're grounded in the word of God. You, you can't be distracted by what might be, you know, happening in the audience that might not be coming across very positive to you. You can't be phased by that. Um, and you can't expect that everybody will like what you're saying, will be receptive. It, it, it is just an impossibility to expect that or want that or try and, and achieve that. The most you can do is to preach the truth or to share um, the truth. Now, um, so we were we were then moving on to the the purpose um, the purpose of the um, the purpose of your your presentation. So does anyone um, want to give one word answers as to, there are four things I think you, 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 the purpose of your presentation, I, I, I think falls into four categories, but does anybody want to share what they think generally the purpose of presentations should be, and it could be a combination of things, um, but I think there are generally four things. I think one is to convey in, in form, mm -hmm. probably one is to convince or persuade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll just leave it those two others can contribute. Anyone else? I'm trying to look at the chat at the same time. I, I see that Shaman has um, mentioned that the pre presenter should use the opportunity to learn and improve based on the reaction of the audience. I, I, I completely agree. And that is where connecting with your audience um, comes in, um, which is the third point that I will be um, coming on to. Um, so Michella, yeah, I completely um, agree with your first two and I have them exactly that way to persuade, to inform. Uh, the other um, two that I have is uh, to inspire um, and also to entertain. And we can see in Paul's interaction, he clearly achieved those. And that, that from the outset, that was his purpose, is to persuade um, his audience about um, who that unknown God that they, 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 they had that inscription um, uh, about who he was. He wanted to persuade them. He also wanted to inspire them about the life of Christ and what Christ came to do and what he means um, for them. Um, and of course, a huge part of the Great Commission is to inform, is to inform the world of that great news, the gospel. Um, and one might say, you know, um, he also um, achieved the, the, the purpose of entertaining um, his audience. We, we read in the, the chapter that one of the things the Athenians did, you know, they gathered in the square and it, it you know, it was a, um, it was a, a sort of social event for them where they congregated, they wanted to hear new things, they wanted to contribute um, new things. So it was part of the entertainment uh, and the cultural side um, that they were um, very much um, used to. But what we what we see from Paul, the purpose of the presentation was the forefront of his mind. He was not concerned about whether all the audience was going to receive to be receptive. He was going to persuade, inform, inspire, and pot potentially entertain um, people about the Word of God. And he would plant, and God would do the watering and you know the growing of what he you know what he planted. With, um, with people. And I, and I think when we are presenting, right, when we're presenting to an audience, we must always give sway to the word of God. We must not be too concerned about ourselves. We must not be too concerned about the audience. And I'm not saying that we must not work with the audience. The third point I, I will go on to is about, you know, working with um, the, the audience. But when it comes to speaking the truth, we must not let ourselves be too, be too distracted about what's going on for the audience. For instance, 
you might notice somebody sleeping and you might allow yourself to become so focused with that one person that's sleeping that you lose the rest of your audience, right? Because you, you, you think you need to wake them up, you need to get them engaged. But they may just have been very, very tired. It's not that they're hostile to the message. It's not that they're not receptive. They may have had a long shift and they are dozing off here and there. Now, if you, if you become so wrapped up in, oh, I want everybody to listen to me and, and what I'm saying, then I think you can easily miss the whole purpose of why we are called to spread the word. It's not about us. It is about standing grounded in the word and spreading it and letting God do uh, the rest. Um, I will pause here before I go on to the final point. And M Michella, um, I've done the cardinal sin as a presenter. I haven't kept um, on top of the time. When do I need to stop? 15 minutes. I have how many? 15 minutes. One five. Okay, I'll, I'll just pause. Um, for a, a, um, a minute or two and um, you know, allow any comments on what we've just talked about, including who your audience is, and, but also the purpose um, of your presentation. Yeah, um, there's no, I don't see anybody's hands up or any things in the chat apart from what Sister Charmaine said earlier. But I think that's a really good point. Um, sometimes, a trick that I have used before, which is if there is someone in the audience who is engaged, i.e. they're listening, they're nodding, you can actually see them taking it in. I tend to look at them, kind of, kind of check in with that person that you have identified, not ignoring the rest of the audience, but as you said, instead of focusing on the person, the one person who's sleeping, I would much rather check you know glance up and check at this person and say oh no 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 they're still with me rather than focus on oh this one person's sleeping so that's something that I I know I have done it, it helps when you're presenting to see um someone who is engaged a friendly face um and that's just something that I, I have done in the past so yeah yeah and, and it is it is complicated because if we if we are honest with ourselves when someone is at the front teaching, preaching, we can sometimes be distracted thinking about all sorts of things. It's not that what the person is talking about is boring, but life happens to everyone. And sometimes we get distracted. Now, should you as a presenter allow yourself to get into the stories that might be happening in, in the audience? No, because it's all complex. It, it doesn't, it's not necessarily reflective of what you're teaching, but your job is there, uh, your job, but your purpose is there to preach the word of God, not to try to figure out what is going on for everybody, because it, it really is very complicated. You do not know what's happening, um, you know, for people. And that's why you need to extract from yourself and get grounded in, in, in the word of God. I'm, I'm Maureen, can I also add something? Because, um, you know, as a teacher, my audience, are some of the most honest and most honest about their feelings and some of the most reluctant people <laughs> you will come across because they're they are students. And you know, it's you 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 have to have a sense of humor. You know, as you said, um, to you, you have to entertain because you know, I've always given the example of when you know my year 11 find out that the rest of the the rest of this the, the, the classes that weren't being taught. And I and because the, the rule is that we're gonna teach them up to the end, even after they have their their thing. And they were rebelling and they were like, I don't know why we need to do it. And I just said to them, you know what, guys, I don't want to be here either. And then I just give them this whole imaginary thing of that actually I'm not even here. And I said to them, Do you want to know where I am? And my one of my students said, the beach miss. And I said, Yes. And I started to describe this beach in Jamaica and where I am and how Bob Marley music is playing and everything. And by the time I finished that, I think I had won them over. And for the rest of the rest of the, the, the lesson, they just got they just got on with their work. So sometimes when we take it too seriously, and sometimes we just have to learn to relax and just, you know, sometimes go with go with go with them as well. I just agree with them and and, and then you win them over and bring them back as well so sometimes it's and as you say 
a lot of times, you know, the kids, they come to school and, and it's not about me, it's about things that's going on in their life. And if you take that on personally, then, you know, I'll be walking outside the classroom every day, not teaching them anything. So you just, you know, you have to believe in your message and find ways of, if your audience are a bit reluctant, find ways of bringing them along. And also knowing that you're not going to win over everybody, as you said. Yeah, exactly. And as Sister Lesa said, it's not overthinking it. It's not expecting your audience to make you feel good about your presentation. Your, 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 once you, you are clear about the purpose of your presentation, that is where you should ensure you're grounded in the word of God. And we had teachings by um, Sister Layla, Brother Everett, about how we get that grounding. So once we are grounded in, in those um, areas of uh, researching, of, of um, you know, understanding the word of God, that's, that's the foundation we need to, to um, start on, stand on um, and move in if no one um, else have any comments and being mindful of the time. Then comes the bit about connecting with your audience. So one, understanding, you know, you're going to face a diversity of people. Secondly, is just being clear about why you're engaging with that audience and not getting too, trying to get into the, you know, into the stories that might be happening for people while they're sleeping and taking it personal. They might be distracted with the kids or so many things can be going on. It's just not letting that face you, but, you know, going back to the purpose and grounding in the word of God. And then finally, is about relaxing and connecting with your audience. So if you looked at Paul, you know, Paul was observing. He clearly was understanding the broader context, not zoning in on one person and going, why is that person sleeping? Oh my gosh, maybe they're finding me boring or uh, you know, starting to you know, get stuff going on in your head that's putting you off the real purpose of why you're there to teach. But he had a general understanding and he sought that understanding because, you know, as the, the, the you know, chapter 17 tells us, he observed what was going on. So he could, got a good understanding of his audience. And then he found a way to connect with them because he saw that these were people searching. They had this inscription, you know, to the unknown God. So he used that as, the, as a connection. And if you notice, he did not go into a long dialogue about, um, you know, the the lore and you know all if he did not go that deep he connected it with them in knowing that they have a desire for this unknown god i'll connect with them at that level because that is where they're at and i'm going to tell them about this god that they're searching for um so one of the things we should learn here is that he he, he looked broadly at what was going on and he stepped in line with them to deliver that message the purpose you know because god asked us to to preach and what we uh, uh, to teach the word of god and what we shouldn't do is you know it's just like a pile driver we have a message and you know we just go on and we just give it paul did not do that he adapted to his audience he knew they were not at the level of okay let me give you you know every last detail about the law and you know going into all that depth no he knew where they were at and he pitched at that level and he connected with them where they were at. And I think that is that that is very instructive. Often, well, no, I shouldn't say often, sometimes you can be part of the audience where somebody is teaching or preaching and they do not read the general mood. And I am not saying one or two people, one person sleeping or something is going, but a general mood or the general level of the, the audience. And they simply go ahead with their, their message. They leave no room to flex. And because they're not relaxed, they can't you know, um, work with their audience. They can't change tact and work with their audience. And I feel a big part of being able to adapt and flex is to be able to be relaxed, be grounded in the purpose, in the word, and then connect with your audience to read generally where they're at, not on an individual basis, as I said, but generally where your audience is at and connect with them at that level. And leave enough flex. If you're relaxed and you're not overthinking things, you will have enough space in your brain to be able to switch 
right? What you're doing. If you're overthinking, worrying about somebody in the corner here, what is going on there, you, your brain, you're a human being, your brain can only take so much, right? So you do not have that space to know how to be swift on your feet to adapt to your audience, right? And, and as I said, we saw that Paul was very good at understanding his people, the people you were speaking to, and, and um, delivering what was a powerful message because some people were convinced, some people were not convinced, but his message landed and had, you know, by God's grace and whatever God wanted out of that was achieved. Um, I'll stop here and ask for any um, comments. Um, Sister Leslie had put in the chat, um, overthinking it now i'm not sure sorry not overthinking it i'm not sure what that was in reference to sister lovely sister leslie do you want to unmute yourself and explain a bit more no i, I think if, if it was a point that moan was making when she says kind of keeping it and not trying to find out what other people might be thinking or what they might be doing and trying to work out what's happening in somebody else's head. So I just made that point. But um, just making the point is what you've just said about by Paul using the, um, talking about their God, that had a kind of a common ground with them. So that kind of draw them in because they must probably start thinking, well, what is he going to say about my God? So that actually made them more engaged with it because they wanted to hear what is he going to say about, I see you have many gods, tell me about it. So it's a way of drawing them in. Yeah. And he was very observant um, in realizing that's where he needed to pitch. Now notice, even though he didn't go into a whole lot of detail and, and railroad with, you know, some you know, letter of the law and going on at them, he did not weaken his message, right? By flexing to your audience, if you're very clear about the purpose and you're grounded in the word, the message will not be weakened, even if you have to flex and adapt to the level at which your audience is at. Paul's message was not weakened. If he was speaking you know, to a different audience, he would, you know, we, we've seen Paul's letters, you know, he can get very much in depth. Uh, sometimes it's impenetrable. You have to read it several times to really get where he's coming from. But, you know, he knew that what that audience needed and the message was not weakened. It was sufficient to persuade and God was there to do what God wanted to achieve, right? He was the vessel delivered the, the presentation, delivered the word of God, wasn't into himself, wasn't overthinking, is, does the audience like me or not? They might not like you, but that's not what you're there for. That's not what God asked you to go out there to do. It's to be grounded in the purpose, connect, deliver it at the level people are at without weakening the message of God and God will do the rest. So mindful of time, I'm going to end there and I'm just going to reiterate um, the, the, the things that I wanted to get across. And that is one, just be remembering that we have to approach it with the right mindset. And that mindset is the confidence. Um, it's not overthinking, it's not um, worrying too much. It's not, um, if, you, if you're already negative before you even start the presentation, it's unlikely to go well. Uh, and knowing that God is empowering you. We've had Sister Layla, we've had um, Brother Everett given the foundation, the tools for us to be able to go out there. So you have every reason to have the right and positive mindset. And on that foundation, going into your presentation is to, is to have grace towards your audience. Not all of them will be convinced, not all of them will like you. Um, some will be tired, some will be <laughs> engaged, some will, some will be hostile. But it's to understand you're, you are not God. Your, your job is not to get everybody to um, um, listen or believe in what you're saying. You are there to deliver the word of God. God will do the rest. Do not get into yourself that it is you that is convincing people, no, God, deliver what God wants and he'll do the rest. So have grace towards your audience. They're diverse and many things might be going on for them. And when you, 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 you appreciate that about your audience, so to speak, 
is to um, make sure that you have a purpose for engaging with them, that the purpose of your message is clear. And there might be a combination of that. You might want to inform them, or you might want to inform and persuade them. You might want to inform, persuade them, inspire. You might want to inform, persuade, inspire, and entertain, or various combinations of those, right? Um, uh, but you be very clear about why you're delivering the word of God to that audience. Um, and then, you know, from there, in delivering that presentation is relaxing, as Sister uh, Mitchell has said, is not, you know, thinking too much about yourself, but really thinking, how do I get that message across? And how do I understand broadly what's going on for the audience, connecting with them where they're at? And then by God's grace, he will do the rest. And he always does. And he always achieves what he wants from you talking about him, teaching his word and connecting with people who know about him and who have not yet heard about him. So I will, I will end that presentation now about um, the audience and then, and really just thank you for your participation. I'm, I'm, I'm Marie, before you go, can you just say what the next um, lesson will be? Focus yes. On yeah, so the next one will be about um, delivering. So some of the things that I think Sister Comfort talked um, about. So when you're delivering, how do you um, ensure that you have a maximum impact and effect in bringing out the word of God? And that, you know, what I would hope to touch on, uh, I haven't yet <laughs> um, done the, the outline or, 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 or um, I haven't yet done it, but it's, it's it things about yeah, knowing your audience, but how you use your voice, uh, how you use your body language and, you know, uh, the words, so things like that in, in, the, in actually delivering the message. Sorry, my son is, is asking me for something, but the next one is delivering. Um, so we'd have the same mindset. Um, um, audience and then uh, delivering delivering the presentation. Okay, All right. thank you, thank you very much, Marie. Thanks, Marie. And for yeah, and again, I I have to say from last week to this week, from the last lesson to this one, you know, it's it's so much food for thought, and 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 just being being mindful because the mindset also is very important, and when you you're going and thinking of the audience as well can affect your mindset if you allow it so thank you very much um for that um, apologies i had really really nice slides honestly they were okay can you beautiful. please just, <laughs> just just once you find them send them to us and, and send them to me and i'll circulate it to to all the ladies so um thank okay. you over to sister exactly. Kate, gonna lead us in a song and then we'll have our closing prayer we're going to be doing Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Guide me, O Thou Great Jehovah, Builder of the Earth. Thou Great Jehovah, I am weak, but Thou art mighty. Hold me with Thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Oh
Okay, thank you. We could ask Sister Eka do the closing prayer for us, please. Thank you. Let us pray, ladies. The Father, the God in heaven, we thank you this evening for thy loving kindness. We thank you for thy blessings towards us. We thank you especially for your son, Jesus Christ, whom you sent down to come and die for our sins. Father God, we thank you for the interesting lesson that we learned this evening from our sister Maureen. We pray that this information should stay in our hearts and we should use it to glorify your name. And we pray that you should use it to bless us. Those of us who have been on the platform and show that we have learned one or two things that we will use in our future uh, evangelism and to promote God's name. So we thank you for this evening, Father, and we pray that you should continue to be with us as we strive to worship you and study about your word and as we strive to follow you throughout our lives. We pray that you should be with us as we disperse to our different activities. We pray you to guide and protect us and to be with us until you bring us back tomorrow to worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you. Uh, thank you, um, Sister Eka. Um, so we have a few announcements just before um, we go. So um, the first announcement, so Sister Kay, can you put them up, please? So we have, um, so the next, um, okay, I'm going to stop, Sister Kay, if you could just stop sharing and I'll share my screen so I can give the, the as those, so I can put up the correct announcements, sorry. Thank you, Sister Kate. I'll just um, share my screen with the. Um, yeah. Sorry, ladies. So I'll just share. Um, so there, there are just a few announcements that we I have here. Um, of things that are coming up. So we have our, um, the next ladies um, training is on the 17th um, of July. Um, so it's the same time, 4.30 to 6.30, 4.30 to 6 p.m. UK time. And if you're in the US or the Caribbean, it's 11.30. Um, to 1 p.m. We also have um, the um, Daughters of Christ UK Ladies Ministry that is being, um, this is um, the love child of um, Sister Bernie and she's launching this ministry and the launch, and she, so the launch date for that ministry is on the 24th of July, 4, 4 o'clock to 6 um, p.m. We also have the Ladies Retreat um, that's coming up um, the 29th to the 30th of October. So can you please save the date? We also have the joint ladies um, lectures um, on the 3rd of July. I think it's from 10, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, is that correct, Sister Comfort? I mean, if you can yes. Correct, the joint ladies um, day is the 3rd of, 3rd of um, July. So to rem uh, remember that. And also we have our Saturday morning little dose of sunshine and new talk session um, that will take place on Saturday coming. Okay, those are things we have in terms of announcement. I just want to thank each and every one for coming here today and sharing um, in this training. I hope you have been uplifted. I hope this is helping in your personal walk and journey um, with Christ. I want to thank um, Sister Eka, Sister Comfort, um, Sister Louisa who, who jumped in um, to help me out today, Sister Adelaide who had, who, and Sister Kate um, and um, sister, I think Sister Eka, Sister Kate, Sister Louise, who are on the planning committee and who have helped to organize and put this together. Sister Kate for organizing the music um, as well. So just thank you guys and thanks. All the ladies who come every 
month to support and to join and to learn and to grow and to encourage. So thank you all. And I hope you'll have a wonderful week, wonderful and productive week this week. I'll, if you want to turn on your mics and your camera and socialize, we'll we, open, we open have.